Hello, my name is Mark, I'm with GCO Tutor, and I'm here today with Practical Machinist to talk about plane selection with G-Code. So if you're coming from a CAD CAM background, you might recognize this shot. So this screen shows that when we first start Fusion 360 in the sketch mode, it asks us to select a working plane. So this is the plane that we're gonna sketch on that we later turn into a 3D object. So we can select these planes by using G-Code also. Now the reason we would switch between planes would depend if we're bringing our cutter in from a different side of the part. For example, when we're doing 3D milling or five axes work. So maybe we need to approach from the side to drill a hole, for example, and we would switch over to the correct plane at that point using G-Code to drill that hole and then move back to our original G-Code or our original plane that we used. Now this can also be used on a lathe as well as a milling machine. For example, if we are working on a flat that we've milled on our rotated part, then we can switch over to a plane that we're using and be able to mill a profile on that flat or on that part of the diameter. So we can also use planes when working on lathes as well. So the G-codes we use to select each individual plane is G17, G18, and G19. So what planes do those G-codes represent? Well, if we have a look at this slide, our G17 is our X and Y plane, our G18 is our X and Z plane, and G19, Y and Z plane. Now that doesn't really tell us much unless we can imagine those 3D planes in our heads as we're talking. So here's a little diagram I made that shows those planes. So if we are programming a flat plate that is bolted to the machine table, for example, we would use G17. So if we're working in the standard Z up uh, configuration, our standard plane would be G17. And this is normally the plane that we default to uh, when we start our program. And then at different stages through the program, we may switch out planes depending which area we are cutting and working on. So now we can see that our G17 plane says it's our X and Y plane, and we can visually see why that works. So as our X and Y plane cross over, that's the plane that we are represented with G17. And G18 there with um, our X and Z, and also G19 with Y and Z. So when we're cutting in our standard G17 plane, our radiuses would look like this, because we're cutting flat on the table. But if we switch over to G18, now I know um, the image shows a flat bottom cutter and not a ball nose, but we would use a ball nose to cut a radius. So a G18 plane would enable us to cut a radius in this direction. So as we switch over from G17 to G18, we would sw switch the direction we can cut our radius. And G19, of course, is the mirror image of that. So let's take a look at a program and how we may see this. So as we read down the first few lines of the program, we have our safety line there, the line that starts with G90. Now you can see I've slotted in the G17 right there on the safety line. So all moves that we do from the initial start safety line position would be in G17, our standard working plane. If we want to switch over to G18, somewhere in the program to change the direction of our radius that we want to cut or change the plane we are working on, we would switch before we start moving. So in this case, when we're going to the G02 move where I'm cutting this radius here, I switch over to G18 just for that one line of code, then back to G17 afterwards to go back to standard working plane uh, cutting. So we can have our plane selection G codes shared by another line of code or stand alone on its own. So we can quickly and easily switch between these planes just by using G17, G18, and G19. So here's another example of a program where we might switch planes. So as you can see, again, I start with G17, but this time we switch over to G19 just before this radius. And just after, again, we switch back to the working plane that we wish to use, G17, right after that line where we use G19. So we can switch around these planes whenever we need to at any part of the program. So this slide helps us put it all together. We can see what our working planes are, and we can see what planes the G codes represent, and we can also see what happens to our cutter, where it assumes what plane we're on for the direction of cut.
So for more information on working with planes, I have an article over on my website. Plus I cover this in great detail during them both the milling and the turning courses over at gcodetutor.com.